Dr. Luc van Heeft uh, from Merka Ekem Syncom, our sponsor. He will speak about integrated drug discovery within CRO uh, network. And to get to know him a little bit better, Dr. van Heeft holds a PhD degree in chemistry from Ghent University in uh, Belgium from 1984 with Professor van der Walle. And he finalized his academic training by a two year postdoctoral stay at the University of California, Santa Barbara in the U USA with Professor Doc uh, Little. He started his industrial career as a medicinal chemist at Merrill Doe in 1986 in Strasbourg, France, where he progressed to head of the medicinal chemistry by the time this site had become part of Sanofi in 1998. In 2002, he moved to Janssen, first as research director of the research and development site in Val d'Oreille, France, before taking on the role of senior director, head of medicinal chemistry EU at Janssen Research and Development with responsibility for European-based medicinal chemistry, analytical technologies and admit. During his Senior Luc was privileged to contribute to several successful projects with numerous programs entering into clinical development in the areas of neuroscience, oncology, and infectious diseases. In 2012, Dr. Van Heef became CSO of Novalix Ilkirch France uh, before moving in 2017 to his actual position um, of Senior Vice President Medicinal Chemistry at Merka Kemp Syncom, where he oversees a team of approximately 80 uh, scientists executing medicinal chemistry activities for clients worldwide. Dr. Van Heeft has been the vice president of the French Medicinal Chemistry Society SCT in 2015 and 16, president of the same society in 2017-18, and he's currently a member of the executive committee of the EFMC. In 2018, he has been elected and named member of the Académie Nationale de Pharmacie in France for his multiple contributions to pharmaceutical developments. Once again, thank you for the sponsoring and the stage uh, is yours. Okay, thank you, Clemens. I am trying to share screen, but I get, now it's working, hopefully. Share screen and there we go. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen, but please go to the presentation mode. Um, we we just see. Okay, your here we go. Now it's working perfect. Okay, I was looking. Thank for you. The... Well, um, it's a real pleasure for for Merkechem Syncom to be part of this meeting and uh, to sponsor this. So I'm going to go rapidly over some thoughts on uh, integrated drug discovery within uh, CRO networks. Before um, going into that, a little brief word about Mechichem Syncom. Uh, today, we can consider as, uh, ourselves as a leading European chemistry CRO, and we are covering uh, chemistry um, from milligram to double digit kilogram of compound. And uh, I would say this, uh, both in discovery chemistry, development chemistry, even ADMI, and then also even wherever needed to even uh, also deliver uh, GMP batches of our different compounds. Now, I'm going now to, to start on my talk and I would like to position these CRO networks also within some historical view on a, what I tend to call a transformation of the pharma R&D. And here I am pointing to a very recently published paper by a good friend of mine, a colleague, Bart Korte, who has uh, been indeed looking into different uh, and evolving outsourcing landscape in pharma R&D. And I don't think that anybody can deny that over the last years, uh, I would say even in the already starting in the 90s, that there has been kind of a uh, getting leaner of the pharma business, and I would say a startup of different CRO type companies. So this is something that has been happening. 
And now to just position that a little bit on uh, why is pharma or has pharma been going into such a direction? Well, to some extent in the same line, what you can see here is that um, I would say 1985, 90, 95, one can see here that still the number of new NMEs that are being approved is getting up. And then for different reasons, um, and some say that it is like the low hanging fruit was gone, uh, that also the regulatory guidelines have dramatically increased, that it becomes more and more difficult to put the drug onto the market. But there was somewhere a, uh, a continued thinking when the pharma on how can we continuously deal with these increased cost versus reduced enemy outputs. We have seen, I would say, uh, already the big, big mergers uh, to try to cope with some of it. But uh, also, I think a number of people have been thinking about new business models to make this happen. And amongst uh, what I would consider one of some of the big developments is that, and here you see, and you all know that it takes, first of all, 10 to 15 years to bring a compound from the start to the end as a drug. We also know, and uh, that has been published already, that one needs about 50 different projects to start from to have, get one drug on the market. So it's very complicated. But when I started my career, uh, and this is very schematic here, this little blue box that I'm showing here say, says that all the capabilities, all the expertise that, that needed to be applied to get this done was all sitting within the pharma R&D environment. And now since the 90s and since that getting leaner, what did happen? And again, this is now also some personal views, is that I would say already in the earlier work that there's more and more um, looking towards what academia, biotechs, innovation hubs, what they bring as new targets, as new uh, potential uh, future drug candidates, they are indeed doing this. And if you add upon that then still um, a very strong input from contract research organization that has all the uh, necessary expertise, especially working with these smaller biotechs that often do not have even the wet labs. So at that, this moment, the contract research organization is really taking a very important place. And so as you can see, the pharma R&D indeed has gotten leaner. I think it has gotten leaner in the earlier phases will still remain highly focused onto the clinical um, phases of the uh, of the development. But this is like the, the kind of the setting why indeed uh, also uh, Bart in his paper is really alluding upon this getting leaner. So from a fully, fully integrated within the large pharma, we have gotten to a highly coordinated uh, type system of, of collaborative work. And of course, at the end, uh, the meaning of this is to uh, go to shared R&D cost, going to cost efficiencies. Of course, also there has been also a kind of an outcome of, of stronger VC funding in, in some of the work that is being done that. There's also, I think, necessary to say that there is a higher flexibility within the resources. Again, talking for biotechs, uh, I, I think it's, it is sometimes, um, I would say, smarter to start working with a CRO rather than to build internally, because if the biotech is, uh, is successful uh, at the stage of clinical research, they unfortunately will have to get rid of their earlier uh, research teams. And fi finally, uh, and again, that's then also my own experience from my time at large, um, at a large pharma, uh, I think that there is really a leaner, agile organization. It's more, uh, it's a greater productivity and a stronger innovation that I can see. Now, bringing me then to uh, getting back to, again, Bart's uh, thinking and paper, uh, the pharma, of course, they are working closely together with different expertise that you need to bring a, uh, a, drug, a drug candidate towards clinical setting. Uh, in vitro biology, the pharmacology, the toxicology, the ADMI, and the chemistry. And now there are different operational partnerships. Project management is done within the pharma that is reaching out to all the different uh, networking partners here. But there's also, of course, uh, one where the earlier work is at that moment being more done in an integrated fashion uh, within, I would say, one single entity, if I may say so. And lastly, there is also the one where then the 
pharma company will be in contact with one partner that at the, that moment will be working closely together. Within Merkegem Syncom now, we, to some extent, can I can say that we are somewhere, somewhere in a blend between, I would say, B and C, in the sense that we strongly believe that one should bring the biology and the chemistry strongly together. And so we have stepped into a, a very strong uh, strategic alliance with uh, biology provider, AXAM, and so, whereas the pharma company uh, can come to us as a single project manager, we at that moment through, I would say the input of AXAM, which is in the assay development, the high throughput screening, the high content screening, electrophysiology phys um, physiology that is needed, uh, bringing them in. And then uh, from the American Chem Syncom being indeed the, the, the chemistry CRO, we do really, to know what needs to be designed within the given molecule to bring it also through the whole phase. And so through this uh, strategic alliance, we are very much capable of responding and uh, starting to discuss with clients that will come with a starting point or even with a, a, a target. And at that moment, we can set everything in place to uh, further develop that. And whenever there is a need, we at that moment also still will further reach out to other um, parties, other CROs that have expertises that are not yet dealt within this setting. And so this was uh, very short and uh, also for the sake of time to also uh, not go too long, I made my story a bit shorter, but at least this is like the new uh, pharma environment uh, where indeed pharma got leaner, where also the farmer has learned to work in close relationship with the academia with the biotechs and with the CROs in order to, uh, I would say, deliver the drugs for the future. And um, also maybe something last but not least to also say is that compared to the slide I started at, this, at the beginning is also we still remain, I would say, in a very close geographic proximity, uh, making that indeed there is really a very, very strong interaction between both teams. And this is then uh, a, a team that we apply for a number of our clients in uh, the more integrated drug type work up to the, uh, uh, the the development candidate that is being proposed. And so that was then in a nutshell on the evolving landscape in the pharma R&D and the importance of some of the CRO networks such as Merkechem Syncom and our uh, partner AXAM. And uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your um interesting presentation and i think that is some uh, you presented something very some very valuable information because most people in academia are not well aware of that the shift from big pharma was is now to smaller sized companies and uh, it is more diverse the, the landscape so this is a very interesting point but what do you think is the is the fu is the future will this more diversify or will we see some more centralized thing also in regards of coronavirus there is, there are some strange movements on yeah. uh, on on the market in other fields what is your personal opinion on that i i still think that this is for the moment all in i would say still further in the building um the whole value chain, I think it's, it's really kind of a very big transformation. It will still take time. Uh, of course, uh, it needs an open mindset of people to that they want to work in, a, I would say, in an, an open innovation type environment. I still think that it's still, and as I still, still see some further evolution that even more will be put in the more uh, flexible um, resource hands of CROs, biot biotechs, that's the way I see how, how I see it further. On the other hand, I also believe that it will remain very important to have the large pharmaceutical companies that will more be the, the, the clinical experts. They at that moment will be looking into the, the, the new targets that will be coming from these um, innovation hubs, being biotech, CROs, academia, working together. It's, it's not completely over yet. And, and to some extent, even when uh, I, well, I'm speaking here, I, I think we just continuously hear that still further large pharmaceutical companies due to strategic reasons continue to reduce a bit in, uh, in headcount. And I think uh, 
Very recently, Sanofi again announced another layoff of something like 1,700 people. Uh, so th there's like really a kind of a, an impact on the pharma side, and which at that moment is giving opportunity to the to the CROs, the biotechs, and uh, and and academia to to chime in. And even I'm I'm assuming that most of the people listening here are the youngsters that are still studying and whatsoever. As you will also see is that in the future, likely there will be by far more opportunity for you to join at some stage these smaller CROs or biotechs, then uh, there will be opportunities within the big pharma environment. That's at least my, uh, my feeling I have with respect to the future. Thank you very much for your exhaustive answer and the very interesting insights in your company and uh, about the political situation, let's call it this way. And uh, thank you very much for the sponsoring.